Yes, some Zanzians festive in here. Welcome back, though, to another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Yeah, that's festive power for you. Oh, and we're going to bring all the magic. We're talking about roast trifles, mince pies, and all things delectable and delicious. Yes, you guessed it. Now, it's another festive theme Culinary Hotline, but this time we have the man himself. Are we not... Oh, we're not blessed this morning because he's cooking his absolute favorites from the December issue of The Taste magazine. Oh, it's their biggest issue yet. So, of course, for you, Mzanzi, join in on the discussion. Come through, send those voice notes. We've got a WhatsApp line. It's up. It's 063-408-8863. We are here to serve. Chef Clem, how are we doing this morning? Oh, I am feeling the Christmas vibe. I again. know. No I know. idea. Hey? Oh. It's so good. It's making me jolly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Like you said, we're cooking out of Taste Magazine. Yeah, and man, this is um, premium stuff, eh? It's not just a normal issue. Okay. It's like a Christmas encyclopedia. It's a, it's a guide of how to do Christmas. How to do I love that. So the sooner we get it, the, ba the better. We don't want to oh, waste yeah. time. We can start practicing and decide what exactly we're going to make on the big day as well. I do like that you say practice, because practice does make perfect, especially yes. in the kitchen. The more you do something, yes. the better you get at it. And you also, like, you'll see, you'll make something and it'll take you, like, 45 minutes. Next time you make it, it'll take you... Half yeah, an hour. Yeah, you start so finding practice, practice. Okay. So I'm using. What are we making today? Two recipes from Abigail Donnelly. Okay. okay. And I like Abigail. it as well. Oh, Mr. Abigail. Yeah. Yes. We'll definitely be seeing her in the new year. Nice. So, like a surf and turf vibe, but two separate dishes. But Ooh. I like presenting it on the table to the options. We're nice. gonna start off with we're gonna do delicious buttery garlicky prawns Ooh. with the banyakuda sauce. Banyakuda. Yes. What is banyakuda? Sounds like from, from Japan. It's from Piedmont. <laughs> okay. Where, where is that exactly? In Italy. Oh, of course. Okay, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. So, I mean, I was okay. going to say it's close to, to Asia, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Not at all. So, but it's, what, what, what makes that sauce so amazing is the olives that are in there, the anchovies in there, and that all just, that's like umami on umami. Yeah. Especially with prawns. People go quite subtle with prawns, but prawns can take a bit of flavor, okay. especially with this sauce. Yeah. First things first. Okay, we're going to go, you can do this whole thing on the braai, by the way. I love cast iron, because cast iron just like lives on the braai. Yes. So we're going to go a little bit of olive oil first. We've de-veined our prawns. And here's another thing. Prawns, like your normal meat, like your steak, like your chicken, don't put it into the pan cold, OK? Get, like, take them out, let them just chill for like 45 minutes before it like, okay. hits the heat. Yeah. We've done that already and taken the vein question out. question as, well, as well on the pan. I know it's obviously great to use cast iron, but what if we don't have that as an option? What would happen in a normal pan? Perfectly fine. fine. Is that Perfectly cool? fine. Okay. I'm just using cast iron for the sake of like if you are gonna do it on a braai. Okay, obviously you that'll can be chuck great. On the wood, on the coals, yeah. Because it's hot, man. Yeah. Christmas <laughs> should be done outside. It's alfresco this year. Yes. So absolutely, everything like I'm showing you now can be done on the braai, especially with your cast okay. iron. But Got you. If you don't have it in the kitchen, perfectly fine. Got you. So okay. prawns, we're gonna go in. Just like when we do certain meats, you don't want to overcrowd the pan, so it's fine to cook prawns in batches. Prawns are defrosted. Oh. Oh, yes, defrost it, yeah. never in water, naturally defrost them. Okay. And then again, like I said, 45 minutes out the fridge, just to like remove some of that chill. Yeah. Okay, so, olive oil's gone in. Get that, the prawns right. in there. You want that sizzle, right? You want that sizzle, yes. okay? When the, as soon as you hear that sizzle, get them nestled in. Prawns are a little selfish. Okay, no, they are shellfish. Shellfish. They are oh, shellfish. No, you didn't. <laughs> but they're a little selfish too. They don't okay. like sharing space. So make sure you get them out, let them okay. all out their own little own space. Zone. Okay? No salt at this point, no salt, okay. okay? But I am using salted butter. Ooh. Salted butter goes in, nice knobs of it, let the butter melt on its own. Yes. Then, yes. over here, banyakuda sauce. It's a combination of olives, garlic, anchovies. So you Ooh, can imagine... Okay. So you've got that freshness, that sort of like breezy ocean feel. Slightly, like ocean, it's slightly briny, but the, the intensity of the savoriness is what really makes the sauce unique. Okay. Butter right. goes in, and don't be... Hey, the festive season. Yeah, 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 of course. We don't of measure course. butter. No one's complaining about that. Bring on the butter. There we go. <laughs> olive oil goes in. And what I'm going to do is I actually need some of the olive oil to actually blend everything together, which is how we're going to put the sauce together. All we're right. going to go olives. Olives, of course. OK. Yeah. Do I need to tell people to make sure the pits are out before you blend you it? You do. This is the culinary hotline thing. You do need to tell people, just in case. <laughs> I once had a student, right? And I told her, I need you to cream the butter and the sugar. OK? Yeah. And you can do the electric mixer all by hand which is with the whisk, Yes. use the hand. 
So I feel like yes, I feel like instructions yes, are good. Yes, instructions yes, are good. Okay, so make sure there's no pups in there. <laughs> so what I'm, is happening? That's the capers, right? Ah, anchovies. Uh, anchovies. Okay. Ooh, they yes. are delicious, and the savory you get out of them, uh, especially when you cook it, it's not it's not that it becomes fishy in any way. It just becomes so extremely savory, mm, which is okay. what we want. All right. So Ryle, all you're gonna ask you to do, I'm gonna check out my prawns. You're gonna get that good. Get blend my blend in. on. I got you. What sort of consistency we're looking for? Um. Two degrees below chunky. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's that sounds. Yeah. Give that a smile before you pass it to me. Nice. All right. Let's check this out. I'm dying to figure this one out. Yeah. Okay. I see you, man. And it doesn't only, not not oh, only on prawns. Yes. Chicken. There's no overpowering of either of the flavors. That's what I love about it. Yeah. It's like the capers of the anchovy, sorry, and the um, olives. I guess the olives kind of just Garlic. fusing together, but it's still bringing me that freshness, which I love. It's giving me that sort of breezy feel, which I love. I can feel myself on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean. The, the hey. breeze just flowing through my head. Through your heart, right? Yeah, this is what it's I about, I love it, man. I love it. This can I get your, your sirloin steak in the meantime? So the sauce is amazing. Ooh, okay. Like I said, not just for prawns, yeah. lamb, chicken, beef. Okay, it's versatile. Vegetables. Really? It that gives vegetables a bit of attitude, which I absolutely okay. love. Okay. Just like our prawns, we've taken our steak out way before it's gone into the heat. What you can do is you can also score the fat. That'll help the fat render out of the steak what a little better. What does scoring the fat mean? Let's do it. Let's yes, do it. Please, come on. The people want to know. Scoring the fat is when you have a fat cap yes. on a piece of meat. Yeah. And you want to release some of the fat and help it render out. Rendering is when that fat actually comes out of the piece of meat. And so hopefully it gets absorbed and binds with the meat and the flavors that it's yes. surrounded by. So scoring is when you go through the fat, just opening it up, cutting it open, but you're not going below the fat cap. You're not going into the meat. Okay. okay. So right. it literally is going to help you get like a crispier top. And that crispiness is flavor, it's textured, and it makes a dish so much more exciting to eat. So right. I'm going to hit this into the pan. Dry pan. Dry pan, all right. Nice okay. and hot, of course. As soon as it goes in. Yeah. Salt pay. Salt, salt, salt. salt. I'm going to ask you to whip up a delicious cucumber sauce for us. Got you, all right. How Can I use your knife now? I think uh, I've got a spare knife at the back for you. Spare knife, let's grab that. I like, you see, the thing is, you got to have rhythm in a kitchen. You do, okay? you do. You kind of like just flow around the kitchen. Moving through the space, and it's also that's why I like working with people in the kitchen. Okay, you I see. Like, just, yeah. you know, you it's like a dance almost. Like it absolutely, festive is a dance. dance, a little bit of chaos, and of course you just find your flow state. Anybody's happy, especially when you're around food and good food like this with a recipe that's gonna knock the socks off of any guest that comes through this festive. Mm, say no more. Clem, how are we doing with this? Am I cutting it just normal size? No, 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 you're doing, a, you're doing an amazing job. All right. For the prawns, what you want is you want a little bit of this blistering on there, you want a bit right. of that char on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's extra flavor. So with our, with our beautiful sirloin steak, this is a sirloin steak, it's just a big one. We're gonna slice it up nice and fast to feed everyone. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do a nice mustard sauce, and we might come back in the second part to kind of Sweet. put it all yeah, together. Yeah, we've got lots of time. We've got the Pakali Not Lamb Bings going right through the morning. Oh, yes, absolutely. So let me tell you what goes into that okay. sauce very quickly. Cream, mustard, butter, okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. So once this is beautifully like nice and crispy, I'll make that sauce in the second part, serve that with our steak. You can see how it presented it over there. I've got the Banyakuda sauce looking amazing oh, yes, over please. the prawns okay, now. That goes over. And you want to serve it with this butter sauce. Imagine now with a bit of garlic bread. Mm. Ah! Oh. Yes, yes. Please. Chef Clem coming through, of course. For you, Mzanzi, don't go anywhere. We are going to be back in just a bit because the culinary hotline bling will continue. Come through on those voice notes. You've got any conundrums you want us to solve? We're here to serve. But for now, let's catch up with the rest of the team. I think it's competition time, I believe. It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back to the Culinary Hotline, bling! Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, that was beautiful. Riles decided to take a little break, so I've taken over the kitchen. I'm not alone, though, I brought a friend into the kitchen with me, Kanyam Zongwana, Deputy Food Editor of Taste Magazine, 100% official, amazing human being. Your food, your food, your social media, everything you do is delicious. It's almost like I can smell the food through the pictures of the Stop. dishes you create. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So you're in the kitchen with us this morning. We're going to make another one of Abby's recipes. Yes. And it's a perfect combination of, like, trifle and peppermint tart. Yeah. So it comes together to make this triple chocolate caramel peppermint tart layer. It's just so delicious. It's a mouthful to say, but it's even more delicious to eat. To eat. Right. Mm. So 
very simple, and I like the fact that the recipe has very simple ingredients, but it comes together to make a very complex and delicious dish. No, complex, sorry. Complex in like flavors, yes. and textures. Because that's what a trifle is, isn't it? Yes, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of like a thousand different desserts into one big bowl, right? And when you get the <laughs> textures right, it becomes Amazing. A layered experience. A layered experience. Exactly. So I'm going to get, I think your cream might be on the heat already. Is it? Is it? Is it? Um, Let me get it on for you. Okay. So the thing about cream when you're making a ganache is that you don't need your cream to be like screaming hot. Mm. It's like there's a saying that says chocolate melts in the hands of a child. Oh, which okay. lets you know how delicate that heat needs to be to melt the chocolate. It's poetic, right? I like that. I've it's never heard that. It's poetic. I like that. So you don't have to have like really boiling cream, just like a nice simmer is all you need. Mm. And that's going to go over some milk, cho milk chocolate and dark chocolate. Right, and we're just going to stir that. How do you feel right? about the combination of like milk and dark and like all the flavors? I mean, well, you know, I'm an old school girl. I love milk chocolate. I kind of loved milk chocolate before I got into dark chocolate, which is very mature, you know? But I like this happy mix, you know, because it just kind of finds a, a balance somewhere in the middle, right? The balance, the yeah. balance. That's, a, that's what the dish is all about. So yes. we've got our caramel treat, and you can't do a peppermint tart without peppermint crisp. It yeah. is so delicious, and it's iconic. Right. Do you remember the time when they were threatening to take it off shelves? I remember that time. I was in the I was in the picket line. I was in the front. You were in the front line. I was in the front line fighting for it. And they brought it back. So yeah. very very simple. I'm gonna ask you to give this a gentle whisk for me. We're just gonna loosen up the the caramel treat. And then yesterday on the show, Graham and I made the lamingtons from the lamington kit from Willie's. Oh yum! So delicious. Do you know how much I had? How much? None. Oh it no! It disappeared on set before I even got there. That's on you. I know, That's I, I should know better, I should know better. <laughs> so, today, instead of that, okay, we've got the lamington cake slicer from Woolies. I you love the lamington, hey? It, hey. It's so nostalgic. And I feel like, again, like when I was younger, I, like, I liked it. Mm. Now, I love it. And a good yeah. lamington is like, it's, it's, it's so, I feel like... So underrated, it's I It's so feel. underrated. It's so underrated. So underrated. So, what we've done is we've got one of the trifles already made, and we've actually put the... We've made a ganache, which is at the darker chocolate part, and then the caramel, which you see in there. And then we've got the lamingtons inside there. It's almost kind of hidden. Mm. So as your guests kind of scoop in, they get a surprise. Yeah. But what I thought is that me as a grown-up, I don't have a trifle bowl at home. <laughs> if anybody out there would like to sponsor me with a trifle bowl, my number is 08. No! <laughs> but what, zero eight, I, no. <laughs> what I do have is a lot of vases and bowls at home. So my thinking is, like, use different size jars, vases, so when you put that one trifle on the table of all the different jars, kind of creates a bit like a centerpiece. I do enjoy that. I really like that. So like long, wide, and kind of in the middle. I yeah. like it. Variety. It's a look. The spice it's a of look. life. Yes. So if um, at home right now my wife's like, what happened to our, our vase and the flowers? Where's it gone? I'm bringing it home. I'll bring it home. This <laughs> is actually a plant vase, but I think it's going to be quite beautiful in the fact that, oh, your cream's looking good. The, oh, what's quite nice is, is the, your spoon actually does get into the vase. And it, so that, that's what you want to make sure. If you're doing this at home, you'll just make sure that the actual whatever you're going to use to scooping gets mm -hmm. into the vase. That's mm -hmm. all you need to do. And then you're good to go. So, Kenya, that's looking amazing. That gets poured over our chocolate mix. I've got some cream that I've whipped up that's going to get mixed with the caramel. Nice one. This doesn't have to be too much of a hectic mix. So I'm kind of going to just pop the whisk to the side and we're going to fold. So can I ask you a little bit of the skinner? Can I get a little bit of the tea? A little bit of witch tea. I'm happy to oblige. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> the magazine looks so beautiful. What happens behind the scenes on set of a Christmas shoot? The behind the scenes, I feel like it gets really festive really soon, you know, because we've got this, um, we've got a schedule that we run on, which is very, very different to the rest of the world. That's true. So um, a day on set when we're doing a Christmas shoot is, it's kind of like a little mini Christmas. Yeah, I would say. So you get to celebrate Christmas like more than once in the year? More than once, especially if you go to everybody's shoots and you're just like, you know what, I want to go to Abby's shoot because she's doing Christmas menu. Don't we all want to go to Abby's shoot? <laughs> we all want to go to Abby's shoot. Oh, man. Imagine what it was like at this trifle shoot, like with all those amazing trifles and... Because the magazine does have a selection of trifles which I absolutely love, not just one yes. trifle. So, like, I feel like people have a preference. You get those people that like the very fruity trifles, mm -hmm. and you get those that like the very chocolatey trifles, which I am a fan of. Same. This is one of them. This is the one I'm kind of, like, saying that I'm going to go to and definitely making this festive season. I'm making it because it's so easy, and it's, like, 
It's three elements and you're done, right? It is. And I kind of feel like you can be as delicate and, and precious as you want with the setup, mm. but the trifle kind of just, the scoop kind of just makes it worth, you don't, you don't have to be too particular. Yes. But you do get those people that like want the specific layers. Oh no. I think that if you want it to be all specific and layered in that way, there wouldn't be anything wrong with doing it like in a, a wider dish, right? Absolutely. Where you can I just like kind that. of lift it out and then everyone gets the exact same thing on the plate, which isn't as fun as a good old trifle bowl for me. I agree. So this is coming coming together really beautifully. And again, like I said, about the different size bowls we're gonna use. I'm mm. actually thinking about it, if you're doing like, if you're doing the cylinder shape, it's going to take up less space in your fridge because, you know, oh fridge gosh, space yes. Yes. during the festive season is so limited. Yeah. So, I've actually, I kind of twisted up the recipe a little bit. Sorry, Abby. I added a little bit of cream in there in the middle. And we're going to yes. add that caramel treat. It's all about the layers. And I like that you can totally go as high as you like. Yes. Oh, again, I, I want to hide the lamingtons. I want it to be a surprise. But look at that. You can see the lamington on the side. I kind of like this vase situation. You got me convinced, because at first I was just like, what is I'm doing? Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, someone just brought in a special treat on the side. Can you pass it to us? So oh, what we've done is we've taken some of that, the ganache. This is, sorry, I need a layer of ganache in here now. Yes. We took some of that malted dark chocolate, and we've actually made, oh, oh, yes. oh we've actually made little Christmas trees. That looks beautiful. That looks gorgeous. So we're going to, one more layer, one more layer, one more layer. What you do want to do is, it's so simple, you're going to melt dark chocolate and pipe a few Christmas trees. This is a fun one for the kids. And I say for the kids, but I mean the, the grown-ups as well, because they it's enjoy like, it. I'm the kids. I am, the kids I, I am kids. <laughs> so that looks beautiful. This sits in the fridge, and you do want to let it sit, just to let all the like, layers get to know mm. each other. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you get that beautiful chocolate set, look at, look at these, they're so beautiful. They're it just so sits on delicate. top there. I mean, uh, Jingle please do it. We've got some questions on social media. Um, are you ready for this? You do it. May Mo <laughs> wants to know, what will your best advice be for making crook, oh, crock and bush? Who I was like, room should what? <laughs> crock and bush, especially the sugar stuff that goes around it and in the sauce. Have you ever made a crock and bush? I actually haven't, and I'm embarrassed to be saying this on TV, <laughs> but I haven't. I've... We're gonna, like, watch us in the new year. Kanye and I are gonna be making crock and bush everything. So my tips is focus on one element at a time. Make the profiteroles. Profiteroles can actually keep their shape if you make them really well. Just store them in a container that's airtight. Yeah. So make your profiteroles ahead of time. Where, where are we at? Here we go. Make your profiteroles ahead of time. I'd say even the day before. Mm. So that's done. That's out of the, day, out of the way. In then, a nice airtight container, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> then work on your filling. And then the sugar that goes on the outside is simply just sugar. Don't mm. add anything else to it. That sugar, which is just normal plain sugar, you want to caramelize and it just goes amber, that mm. becomes the glue. So you're going to fill your profiteroles layer by layer. Take your time and be careful with sugar. Sugar's really hot. So dip one at a time. Don't do two hands at a time. One hand and just start layering up that tower. And if you don't have a cone shape, just build one up out of foil. Use something, mm. whatever you have in the house to get that perfect signature shape. Kanye, it's been great having you in the kitchen. Thank you so much. You're back in the new year? I'm back in the new year, for sure. And don't Definitely. worry, it's the second last episode of Culinary Hotline Bling. We'll be back next week for another episode of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ching, ching, ching! ching. ching.